everybody, hope you'll be well, keep it safe, watching plenty of good movies. Big thanks to Eric for joining us last week on Talking Movies. This week, though, is kind of special. We are going to be picking our favourite underrated films. We only have six choices. I'm going to be joined by our dear friend, Dimitri, and a new guest that is going to be Elliot Cohen. That is going to be 8pm GMT, 3rd of July. Everything in the description. Go, go, go. See you then. Get your watch list ready. Get your Amazon. Get your CX. Get your eBay links ready. It's going to be an interesting one. So, let's get to the video. That the movie guy. Okay. Since I'm a bad person and I don't have anything new to review for you, I thought we'd do another mail and chat. But this is number two, so we'll do we'll do this into a series maybe. We'll see how it goes. So the point of it is I'm gonna have some mail, show you what I picked up recently, and then I'm gonna give you five choices of my lockdown list that I have been going through, and we're on 225 titles so far. So let's get started. Recently on the channel I reviewed The Woman Who Ran From Hong Sang Soo and it's kind of really reignited my passion for Sang Soo's films. Um, so I've watched quite a few of his back catalogue which I've not seen before. But also I've been meaning to start building my Sang Soo collection mainly from the Kim Min Hee legacy. This is what I'm calling it, the Kim Min Hee legacy. So all the films that Kim Min Hee has starred within the Sang Soo universe. <laughs> And uh, I picked Claire's camera up already, as you've seen in the previous video, but now I picked up On the Beach at Night Alone. This was the very first Hong Sang Soo film I ever saw in the cinema. I did not love it originally, as I didn't really anticipate what to expect with Hong Sang Soo. But as time has grown by, and I've learned and appreciated Hong Sang Soo a lot more, this has become one of my favourite films. These have reversible covers, but I do prefer this artwork compared to the actual poster itself. Um, most of the Kim and He films are reviewed on my channel somewhere, so feel free to go and find them wherever they are in this labyrinth of videos. Next up is Hong Sang Soo's Grass. This is one of my favourite Sang Soo films, and it is only 70 minutes long. It has Kim and He, it's in monochrome, it's a, it's a very poignant film, it packs a punch in a very short length of time. I adore this film. This is easily top four Sang Soo for me. Most definitely. These are all released by Cinema Guild, by the way. I think they've got five all together now. They have this, On the Beach of Night Alone, Claire's Camera, Hotel by the River, and uh, The Other Day. I think those are the only ones they have. At the moment, anyway. I'm sure there'll be more. God bless America. During our thriller discussion on Talking Movies a couple of weeks ago, Huss recommended me a film called Confessions. Unfortunately, I have not watched Confessions yet. It is a film from 2011, and it was actually the entry for Japan in the Academy Awards. I'm just picking a good evening to watch it with my girlfriend because I think w in the regards to this I need to focus. So once I've watched it you'll be able to read my thoughts on Letterboxd as you can do with all of the films I am featuring on this channel most of the time. So confessions. As you know I was a big flight carrier for Pamela Lorraine's Emma at Venice Film Festival last year. This is one of the favourites of the fest and I'm glad to see so many people loving Papa Lorraine's film. I utterly love this. You can see it on movie right now for free and then buy this beautiful Blu-ray with this wonderful slipcover all shiny and chrome and ah uh, yeah I'm so glad that this actually got a Blu-ray release in the UK. As mentioned in the first mail on chat I believe I fell in love with Alejandro Jodorowsky's Santa Sagre. This is the Severin release of it, which I have never owned a Severin film in my life. But once I check the back of this, it is packed full of features, and I'm so excited to dig through this. It is the most accessible Jodorowsky film possible. I highly recommend it. Try not read anything about it. It is a spectacular watch. Last on the mail pickups is Nicholas Winding Refn's The Neon Demon. I actually sold my UK version of it because it was too chunky. I like a good slim cover and I got this French edition um, the other day. I've had a massive hand craving to rewatch this film. This is one of my favourite films of the 2010s. I love it. Funny story is I actually went to see this in France in 2016 when Wales just lost to England in the Euros and I was so sad that we lost against England. I went to the cinema to watch this wonderful model cannibal film. It, it stands the test of time for me. I absolutely love it. So to the recommendations, 
I am 100 odd days into this lockdown and I have seen 226 titles to this very day, which is the 30th of June. This has been one of the best times that I've had to catch up with cinema and to learn more about film in general. First up is Bob Foss's All That Jazz. All That Jazz is the most live and kicking glitz and glam film about death that you'll ever watch in your life. It opens up with this wonderfully choreographed scene of them singing on Broadway. And in that two minutes, you really get to understand Roy Scheider's character. The character should not be liked, he should not be loved, but there is a charm that Roy Scheider gives to it. And through this whole process, we get an understanding of his life and his choices and what he's done, his regrets, his retributions, everything. This is a semi-autobiographical film from Bob Foss and it, you can sense the passion that he had for this project and really just to show one person for what they are and what an industry can do to you, I think. But the way this film ends with this beautiful <laughs> ending, I loved it, but it's so somber and very sad. I, I would highly recommend this. It's only available on Sky Store in the UK. It's not on Criterion Channel right now. It's owned by Disney now, so that is another problem, I guess, but I got a Blu-ray from Spain. More to follow on that one. Next up is Comrades, Almost a Love Story from Peter Chan from 1996. It stars Leon Lai and Maggie Chung. This is the melodrama to end all melodramas, in my humble opinion. I was so enamored and floored by it. While you'd think that this is going to be your conventional type of love story, it really is a twist and turn of time. Time is, is a bitch and then it just shows how it can really destroy relationships and destroy connections and love really between people. And through fragmentations of time, we see how Leon Lai and Maggie Chung refine each other coincidentally. And this is why I say it's a melodrama. Everything is a coincidence and it's a very nice coincidence at times. But what Peter Chan does is he really hits you hard with some scenes. It is shot with such a vigor, very intimate framing. And it also has Christopher Doyle playing a very drunken English teacher. And if you know Christopher Doyle, like most Wong Kar Wai fans, you will understand what I mean. I would love more people to see this. I got recommended this from Huss, one of my favorite Maggie Chung films. She works at Mackie's at the film, okay, at the beginning. That, that is enough to sell you. Maggie Chung working at McDonald's. Just watch it, it is beautiful, absolutely beautiful, loved it. Next up, I've got Michael Haneke's The Piano Teacher. I have, <laughs> I have stalled watching this film for quite some time because I thought it was actually going to be a very conventional Michael Haneke film. Well, I was very wrong. This has been the most shaken I have ever been with any Michael Haneke film. The, it really is a film about repression and how Isabel Huppert kind of contains herself from fully flourishing herself sexually and through this whole film it becomes very toxic it is a very uneasy film to watch but at the same time it's deeply philosophical heavily psychological because the connection that Huppert has with her young student within this film is grotesque but this raw vivacious energy comes from these scenes. And I honestly, I do think that this is Isabel Huppert's best performance in cinema after seeing it. And it really, it, le it stays with you, you know, it doesn't leave your brain. It continuously is baffling me. I've only just seen it, but I cannot go over the sheer power that Haneke has with this beige colored film that really hits a wallop. It is utterly striking and I regret waiting this long to watch it. Next up on my list is 444 Last Day on Earth from Abel Ferrara. Abel Ferrara has instantly become one of my favourite directors during lockdown. I've watched I think 10 of his films by now and honestly I could recommend Nero's Hotel, I could recommend Addiction, I could re recommend Go Go Tales, but this one has stuck with me. It's a 90 minute film, it's even less than 90 minutes, and it's literally set with Willem Dafoe and his partner, and the world is coming to an end, and it's just how they spend their last day together. And there is this, this natural connection that Ferrara and Dafoe have anyway, but what you get from this film is, what would you do? How would you leave this world if 
you won't be able to see the people that you truly love what would you say what is going to come out of you and this is the whole process of 4, 444 last day on earth it just meanders and you contemplate but what you see on screen is really beautiful and considering that it's shot on a very small budget and basically in one apartment and through one small street in New York it really is one of the most intimate films I've ever seen and um, I love it, I actually loved it um, I actually had to VPN this in on a German site and then I, <laughs> I put the Blu-ray also which is on the way I think but it's one of my favourite Abel Ferrara films and um, I really want more people to watch Abel Ferrara films and yeah if you go over to my letterbox you'll see <laughs> all the Abel Ferrara films I've watched in 100 days <laughs> So check it out. Last film on my list is Daisies by Vera Chitlova. This is on Criterion Channel right now and it's only an hour and what about 15 minutes long but this is one of the most audacious pieces of cinema that I have ever witnessed. She just breaks the whole barrier of cinema within her film. It is beautifully coloured, there is black and white, there's monochrome, there's colour, there's stop motion, there's beautiful music. It's literally about two young women and the adventures they go through, but it's so abstract in the way that it's conformed. It is, it's just an utterly mesmerising experience. It instantly went on my top 10 list of lockdown so far. I love this film. It is probably my favourite film I've watched from the Czech New Wave so far. And then I think probably The Cremator is just behind it. But Daisy's is striking filmmaking and I cannot wait to watch more of her films um, so yeah definitely check out Daisies. So those are my recommendations and those are my pickups please let me know what you think. I am moving forward with the time I have now with watching films I'm in the middle of watching Chantal Ackerman films, I'm in the middle of completing Kelly Reichardt's films, Atim McGoin is another director I'm trying to go through Finished with Sean Sono for the time being, finished with Cronenberg for the time being. I want to got a few films from both of those directors left. Continuing with Abel Ferreira. Yeah, a lot of good stuff. Continuing with Hong Sang Soo journey. I'm trying to go to earlier Sang Soo's now if I can find them, which is another issue I have, but it's fine. Plenty of cool things going on. Hello new subscribers, hello subscribers. Please let me know what you're doing. I hope you're keeping well, keeping safe. Hopefully we'll see you at Talking Movies this very Friday. I'm actually working on a film festival at the moment. Uh, it's called Three Films Festival. It's based in Wales. It's going to all go be online. If you are interested in seeing new short films, I will leave a link to the YouTube channel below. It's going to be kicking off on 31st of July. It's a project that I'm really glad to be a part of. And if you have any further questions about Three Films Festival, please let me know. All the details are below, so go for it. And as we normally say on this channel, Dale, Danke, Obrigado, Merci beaucoup, Arigato, Dankeschön, Bitteschön, all the shins. And obviously, never change.